Today we're going to go on another field trip to a local reef keeper's house here in St. Louis. You know him as Inland underscore Reef on Instagram. Let's go. What is up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. The easiest and most free way to support the channel is to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. It's super easy, it takes just a couple seconds, and it goes a long way. Today we're gonna visit one of my good friends here in the St. Louis area who has an amazing coastal reef tank. Here in St. Louis, we have a nice little reefing community and if you missed my last video with Ben and his stunning reef tank lit with $100 lights, you gotta go check that out. Had a lot of people interested in knowing if those lights were the real deal and according to Telegram on Instagram, they're not bad. They actually are comparable to the new Red Sea lights, but spoiler alert, they're not 300 watts. But if you look at Ben's tank, they are seriously growing some awesome coral. So they work. I'll let you go investigate on your own, but if you're doing a budget build, this might be the light for you. I'm not gonna make this intro too long because I really just wanna get into it. I think Tyler is doing a new slash old trend in reefing, kind of bringing it back, but with a modern day flair. You'll hear Tyler mention a couple times that the inspiration for this tank really came from Julian Sprung. I've linked to a couple different tours of Julian's reef tanks down in the description below. The OG reefers out there are gonna see this tank and be like, ah, it's gonna be like a breath of fresh air. And if you're a newbie or you're just kind of starting out in the hobby, Tyler's tank is gonna give you a different perspective on where you can go in the reefing hobby. Overall, you'll get to see that it's not always about fluorescence. You can still have a beautiful piece of the ocean in your home with a natural look. All right, without further ado, let's head on over to Tyler's. All right, so we're here, we're at uh, Tyler's apartment. This is a sweet place, man. Look at these windows. What, what did you say this place was? It used to be an old uh, baby carriage factory. Um, so the reason they're super tall is because they had all the machinery uh, in between all the different floors. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. This is a sweet place. And I think we've seen a lot of this on Instagram, right? Uh, we've seen your Pico tank. We've seen uh, obviously your, your tanks back here, but I think this one is kind of the, has stolen the show and we will get to that. But first we're gonna go to the Pico tank, the tank that kind of inspired this tank. So let's, let's go on over here to the window. Go ahead and uh, just tell me what this tank is, uh, where'd you get it? How did this whole thing start? So when I lived in my last apartment, uh, I had this awesome like windowsill and I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to have something that I could just put there as a secondary tank. Um, I acquired some macroalgae from Corner Reef, the store that you frequent, and uh, I thought, you know what, let's try a macroalgae tank. So I went to, I think, Petco, and I bought this. This used to be, or what they sell it as, is those three-part beta tanks, and I just took the dividers out. So it's actually just a two-and-a-half or three-gallon tank, I can't remember, and uh, I threw some mangroves in it. I had a whole bunch of macroalgae, and it kind of just spurred my interest into the whole kind of freshwater, saltwater kind of mix in this hobby. Uh, it's been going for about two years. It's evolved, it's changed, it's, it's done different things. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen kind of the progression. It's really, to be honest, kind of like a freshwater tank. It gets taken down and tries something new. And currently right now I'm working on actually adding driftwood. So there's a piece of driftwood in this tank um, and that's kind of the, the goal it was to see, can driftwood be in a tank and have corals actually thrive? Uh, so I have a piece of Seriata Pora in there. Uh, everyone says that pH will go crazy and all this. And so far I haven't seen any adverse effects. Um, it does sit in a windowsill, so it gets tons of allergies. Uh, that's just kind of the common nature of it, but that gives enough light to the mangroves, to the algae and even the corals to grow where I'm just using par 38 bulbs. Uh, nothing super fancy. Uh, it's just a white and red LED bulb over the mangroves. And then if you move over to the, uh, the one that's underneath, I don't know if it's turned on, that's just a simple tuna par 38 bulb from eBay. It has like some blue lights in it, which are cool with adding to the uh, 
I guess the par gain for the corals. And then the fixtures themselves are from Ikea. Nothing, anything, nothing crazy at all. Just wanted to do something to give me enough height to get above the mangroves, but be adjustable as they grow. So what's the, oh, you have a pump in here. What is that pump? <laughs> it's actually from uh, a cheap surface skimmer I used to use on one of my freshwater tanks. So okay. uh, a lot of freshwater tanks are run with canister filters. And so they usually add a surface skimmer pump. And so I just broke it apart and just put the pump part in there because it has a little small filter that I can just take the filter pad out and clean it. And then you've got some uh, other equipments back here. What can you kind of take us through what you're running? So it's got a, just a small ATO, um, just a basic smart, uh, smart micro uh, ATO pump just to keep the water level constant. Uh, this tank has no water changes. So it is being run by two of the Camor X1s. One is pumping the Alpha Reef by Tropic Marin. And then the other one is pumping in fuel from Seachem. Oh. And so that helps to keep my nitrates up because there is no fish in this tank. I need to have something that can give a nutrient source so that way I don't have to worry about imbalances. Do you know what you're dosing a day? So it's actually on a th every three days for the uh, nutrients, uh, the fuel. And I believe I'm dosing like 0.2 milliliters. I mean, it's super tiny. And then the uh, Alpha Reef is 0.1 milliliters every day. You can have a, a little reef tank in as small of a space as three gallons. I mean, I've got my two and a half gallon, but this is a, this is like a really well established three gallon tank. Yep. It's been around for a while. It's, it's been through a move. I mean, I moved it. Oh, there's the blue. Yep. So there's the blue lights coming in. So that actually helps add a little bit more par and you can see how it illuminates the Sarah to pour a little bit more. Let's get to the larger tank that you just set up across the room here and take me through that. Sounds good. You've just recently started posting pictures on Instagram of this beautiful tank. What was your inspiration on this bad boy? So I guess my biggest inspiration, and I think you, everyone knows who Julian Sprung is. Uh, I, I think I started mangroves because of his uh, refugium add-on to his main peninsula tank and so I started seeing gorgonians pop up in like the local fish stores around here I started collecting them probably about a year ago year and a half and I just fell in love with them it's the natural the natural vibe and the aspect of like I feel like I'm snorkeling like I'm down in the Keys down in the Caribbean snorkeling kind of bringing that up to well the middle of the United States where we are nowhere absolutely near a coast or salt water, anything in general. Um, so I started kind of figuring out this plan. And through that, I actually met some awesome people at Aquashella uh, last year. And they are the ones who kind of introduced me to their new line of tanks. So the stand and tank are from SR Aquaristic. They're a local company to where I used to grow up, which was up in St. Charles, Elgin, Illinois area. Uh, they just came out with these tanks and stands uh, not too long ago. The cool thing about the stand is it's made of GFRC concrete. So it's super light, uh, but it has that concrete-esque feel to it. Uh, it's totally different than any other stand you've seen. No plywood, no metal, anything like that. And it adds to that like nature of being super, super cool with the vibe of this tank. And so from there, uh, I moved from my last apartment to here, and it's been just a constant uh, work in progress to set this up. I had them all in a separate tank until I got this one up and cycled. Started with all dry rock, did a whole cycling to it. Um, old pictures, you probably can see that I had Kessels on it used, uh, before, but the problem was the Kessels, they're spotlights, and so each individual light it, it kind of was too harsh in its singular area. So a uh, good friend and someone you actually highlighted in your last video, Tiger Boy, uh, he has been running the Twin Star Light over his macroalgae tank. And I thought, wow, that's a really cool idea to run something like that. So this light is actually a 6,500 Kelvin, but the cool thing about it is it has blue LEDs as, long, as well as the whites, the reds, the greens. And the blue LEDs are there for the photosynth uh, photosynthesis. 
which is actually what we use for coral growth. Uh, it's kind of within that realm of 400 to 460. And then the reds and greens are there to help grow the macroalgae that I have in this tank, mangroves, other things like that. So it just kind of evolved. And then on top of that, I had a few soft corals that I just couldn't cut up. Some that I got from, from you, your weeping willow is in there. Hey. And so I wanted to put, bring them into this bigger space. So it's become kind of this sort of a few softies. I got a colt coral. I have my sort of variation of a long tentacle uh, toadstool. And then of course, Remy's uh, weeping willow toadstool. And then there's just an absolute horde of Gorgonians in there. They're very easy to care for. They're, I think, underappreciated in the hobby as such a cool filler or even an additional coral to place next to corals to separate corals from each other so they don't sting or fight with each other. And so I thought, why not create a tank specifically highlighting that coral? As far as equipment goes on this, we talked about the light, which is really sleek. Like, I kind of wish we'd have some reef lights that, that have this nice stainless steel look and i agree I feel no. like this looks so much better no offense to kessel but over this tank i feel like this light looks so much better than yes than the kessels you're you're not having to deal with all the cords and all that stuff well and that was the issue is this this is supposed to be kind of the centerpiece of my apartment and i had so many cords wrapped around it and i know that kessels come out with like the wi-fi controllers but i was using the older ones because that's what i had available and uh, there was just a lot of cords for the spectral controller for the lights themselves. And so I went with the one cord, uh, one light option, and it happened to be with Twinstar. And I think it gives the proper light output and spectrum balance that this tank really needed. Looks like you have two MP10s over here. Take me through the, the hardware on this. So the hardware is really very simple. I'm, I'm very much keep it simple, stupid kind of mentality. I have two MP10s, they're running on the pulse mode. Uh, I was watching one of Julian Sprung's videos and I kind of saw how he ran his uh, power heads and it seemed like he just had the whole back and forth kind of pulsing action, which seems to be doing really well for the Gorgonians. Their polyps are out and nicely extended. Real quick, what are these hoods? A way to adapt your MP10s to run them higher up near the water level and that way they won't suck in air. Like if you know oh, anything okay. about MP10s, the minute like you're like a centimeter above that like six inch range, it's creating the vortex right down into it and all you hear is gurgling. Gotcha. Um, I saw them on Reef to Reef. People make them with 3D printers. I, I bought mine from saltwateraquarium.com. And the center thing is my like mechanical and um, chemical filtration. So I have some filter floss, uh, a block of carbon in there. The unit itself is a XP Aqua, they're flexi. They, sometimes you see them sold with uh, their auto top off, the Duetta. And I had the Smart Micro ATO already on there. Uh -huh. And so I just put that on there and bought the surface skimmer unit. So it runs my sensor so I don't see it. And the one thing about ATO sensors, uh, I get tons of sunlight coming through these windows. It will trip it and just start dumping water in. So I have to keep it kind of hidden. So that way the sensor doesn't realize that, you know, the sun is, is the water level, things like that. Use filter floss to try to, you know, purify it, clean the water, keep it clean. And then right below that, there is a block of carbon. And then below that is some filter floss and a pump that's actually pushing water down the center of the tank. And so that's the only filtration I have and then just water changes. I was so, gonna say, so you're, this is a, this is a goldfish bowl. It is absolutely a goldfish bowl. <laughs> we, we have no sump. There is, this is not technically reef ready. It's, uh, all you have under here is your MP10 controls and auto top off. Yeah, auto top off. And then I have a, uh, so I got the titanium heater from BRS. So it has the uh, Inkbird controller. And so I That run... actually looks cool in the tank. It does. It fits the vibe because it's got that, that kind of metalistic. It works with the light. And so I run that with the Inkbird temp controller that came as, you know, comes together with their package. And it's, it's done the job well. It keeps the temperature fine. And the MP10s pump the heat down to the other side of the tank where the, the temperature probe is to make sure I'm in the right area. I got to tell you, the, 
this stand is probably one of the coolest stands I have ever seen or felt. It's like cool to the touch. It's rigid, like it's, I don't it, I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen like the logo. The logo is like the coolest thing. I, I don't yeah. know, like. It's like a metal. It's It looks like a metal Gorgonian or a metal SPS. Um, and it's crazy because mostly the people who use these tanks don't really use them for salt water. They're kind of a freshwater market, although they have been really diving into the salt water side. These tanks can be drilled. Um, Cammy's Reef, she has one and it's drilled. And so when she uh, kind of downgraded all of her innovative marines, she put all of them into here and uh, actually used the, I think it's the eShop's uh, new kind of overflow. And so that they can be drilled. You can make this reef ready. They have sumps for it. I just, uh, with the aspect of living in an apartment, I'm on the second floor, weight is an issue. Yeah. Um, I keep it simple. I mean, I know that I've used the Pico. The Pico has done successful things. It's grown SPS. I wholeheartedly can keep the same mentality and grow soft corals. So what was the brand again? SR Aquaristic. Is this the largest tank that they offer? Correct, yeah. So this is a 42, it's 42.2 gallons. It's kind of a odd size. Uh, 39 inches long, it's 16 inches wide and 16 inches deep. You know, I have some yellowish Gorgonians here, and then you can see some of the purple variations. And actually this one down here is a cool kind of pseudo Gorgonian. It's called Briarium. And it's not really a Gorgonian, it's actually a GSP family. Oh, really? Yep. I could see that. It looks like a Gorgonian, but it's actually not. So kind of a different variation. Thought I'd add it to the tank, but it's kind of aggressive, so it stays off the rock work. Yeah, take me through some of the, some of the corals you got in here now. You can't have uh, a coastal tank without a platygyra. So there's like a, what, closed or closed brain is what they call them, the common name. So that, um, I kind of follow the... Uh, Coral Morphologic on Instagram and they have that camera that's down in the keys and one of them has like a camera right on one of their awesome brain corals and so I had to put one in there. A uh, bunch of different like sea fan varieties. You got your Corky Gorgonians down here. Uh, there's a Colt Coral, uh, Groobs Gorgonian, a common one that everyone knows that grows like a weed. Uh, different varieties of like uh, ribbon gorgonians, uh, purple sea whip, it doesn't have its polyps out right now, is right here. And then other than that, I have different variations of macroalgae. So you can kind of see Chlorpa prolifera is like the, the thin leaf ones. And then the ones that look like palm trees are Chlorpa palspoides. And then you have like this tufted branch one that you thought was chicken feed on my Instagram post, which is pretty funny. Oh yeah. Yep, so that one's chilling there. And then Codium is right below the stag coral. Um, hopefully that stag coral grows up and kind of creates its own little area for the damsels to kind of home in. I have a pair of skunk clownfish. They've been with me for a little while and you know I wanted to give them a little home. So there's a sea bay anemone sitting kind of right back here. That one's chilling in right now. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. Or she. I'm not sure. Or I don't both. think they've figured it out yet. I know they're still kind of fighting. And then I guess from there, I mean, the mangroves. So I have a single mangrove in here. Uh, I had a few more in here, but I think they didn't adjust well to the tank yet. I may have accidentally broken the roots. Uh, that's probably, that's a kind of a death kill for most mangroves if the roots break at all, because I use pressure to excrete the salt within their trunk. So if a root breaks, salt water just goes right in and it melts. So the goal is to get a whole bunch more of them because I think Mangroves are cool. The whole point of having something outside of the tank versus it expands it from just a box of water. That's a uh, blue hypnia. So, oh, yeah. so blue hypnia, that's one that people kind of seek after. It's hard to find, uh, especially get in stock. It's a really cool one. Grows like a weed once it's established. Can be kind of delicate. So I've, I've, I've had some, I've had it melt off, I've had it die. Um, but it's a cool, a cool macro to, uh, to grow. And then the last thing, I have some sponges. I have one sponge in here, but I'm trying to add some more things that you'd find down in like the lower light areas of like a Caribbean or Florida. And so I'm gonna try and fill in some of the overhangs and things like that with sponges and just 
try to add a little bit more pop of color to a pretty brownish tank. Yeah, dude, this looks awesome. Congratulations. Thank I, you. I can't wait to see this thing fill in. And can we just talk about the shirt real quick? You're wearing a Bahama Llama shirt, but like... I mean, even the llama has to wear a mask too. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make sure. We gotta make sure everybody's safe. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> well, Tyler, thank you so much for taking me through this tank. Anything else you wanna, you wanna say that we didn't hit on? I'm looking to get a Durasa clam. It's one of my goal corals to keep. So there will be a Durasa clam, but other than that, this tank is pretty much set. I, I just wanna watch it grow, fill in, uh, and hopefully we can do some updates in the future. Well, thank you for showing us your tank, dude. And uh, you got a sweet place here. Uh, this, this tank just accents the space. We'll have to come back and uh, check out your other tanks here uh, some other time. Maybe, that, maybe that'll be a part two. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, those are my, my reef designated tanks with corals. Pretty cool, huh? I think he did a fantastic job with that coastal reef tank. A lot of us are more drawn to the fluorescent corals when we first start off in the hobby, but as you progress, you kind of get into different stages of coral nerddom, and then you tend to have a higher appreciation for tanks like Tyler's. These kinds of tanks, these coastal tanks, are really underrepresented in our hobby. I mentioned this to him off camera, but I really think that Tyler did a great job at selecting fish because those colors really pop in that tank. Leave any questions that you may have for Tyler down in the comments section below. If I don't know the answer, he'll be able to answer your question for you. Also, you can always reach out to Tyler on Instagram. He is inland underscore reef. I've been talking about it for a little bit, a larger display tank. I know one thing for sure. I want it to be a lagoon style tank. I'm currently playing with some dimensions. We've taken measurements of this room over here where the coral studio will eventually be. It's gonna be some months down the road because it needs a lot of uh, renovation in there. Exciting things are coming and I've been studying a lot of different lagoon systems out there in YouTube land. One of the ones I'm pretty excited about in particular is the lagoon tank they just installed at Ocean State Aquatics. Oh dang, that's a seamless transition. No, but seriously, check out this toadstool. I saw this and I was like, okay, Scott Crow. <laughs> I see you, where you hiding all this coral at? Go ahead, put that in a box right now and send it off to your boy. Make sure to check out their recent video of their lagoon tank. They're stocking it with a bunch of different corals. So really some cool content there if you're looking for some inspiration. If you want more tank tours, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. In the meantime, make sure to catch up on all the other videos on this channel. If you're new here, there's so much to go through. And if you're all caught up on the videos, make sure to check out the links in the description for Julian Sprung's tank tours. He's got just, just a really cool setup and uh, you could definitely get some inspiration from there as well. It says to ad lib here. Um, I don't really, don't really have anything to ad lib. You guys have anything? <laughs>